Wednesday afternoon here in the northeast corner of the world's most magnificent country, South Africa. We have our problems, but we have far more going for us than we do against us. And there we have three vultures. Now those vultures are looking down at a carcass with hungry eyes, the carcass of a young buffalo murdered in its infancy by some lions yesterday evening. Hello, my name is James Henry. On camera today is David. Hello, David. Hello, David has been a little bit under the weather today, but we've dosed him up with a whole lot of... Um, oh, sorry, yes, I've been reading up about birds. Uh, how we... Uh, David has been... And I've got no idea if they're still here. I imagine they would be. They were very full of beefalo. I think there might be some beefalo left. And I also would like your help in identifying them. We think they were in Nguhuma lionesses. We are not 100% sure, I don't think, because the Nguhuma pride has basically exploded into 100 different pieces because they are all giving birth, seemingly. Right, well, they were in here earlier this... Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Safari Live. My name is Byron, and with me on camera this afternoon, we've got VM. Hi, VM. Great to have you all with us again on this beautiful, beautiful South African winter's afternoon. James is correct. I'm heading off exploring down to Cheetah Plain. I've not been here yet, so getting to see a new area. There was one lying right there when we were, came back from drive today, and now it has moved. So what we'll do is just have a little squiz around here, and if we don't find one lying in the shade almost immediately, we will go off to the treehouse dam and see if they aren't lying there. But I can't imagine they've been gallivanting too far from here, given the size of the belly on the lioness I saw this morning and perhaps give them what for and send them scuttling off into the bushes. No, I see nothing in the way of lions. This is the first time in the history of lions that they've actually moved during the middle of the day. Well, at least it adds to the mystery of things. Hello, Becca Dorset. You're a new viewer. Uh, wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for joining us, A, and B, thank you for asking a question. You want to know what we are doing? Well, Becca, we're on a live safari in the middle of the Kruger National Park. Uh, that's the sort of macro scale of what we're doing. What I... Canada, obviously. Throughout the English-speaking world and some parts of the non-English-speaking world. All righty. I see no tracks, and there is a quite a nice game path, which is a path that the which is a path that the animals might pride at the moment. Everyone is the five lionesses. At least two of them are off with babies. One of them we think is possibly also doing the same, leaving just these two on their own. And uh, whether they're pregnant or not, or have been mating, I'm not sure. But the pride will no doubt reconstitute itself. Once the cubs are about six weeks old, then the pride will normally be introduced to the little cubs and they'll all start to move as a unit again. But while they're all giving birth, they are going to be split up. That's quite impressive for two lionesses to have achieved. Because normally they'd be chased off. So few lions would be chased off by, by very big buffaloes. 
Now, Auntie Lynn, you want to know where the buff carcass could be? I don't know, because I, I didn't see it. And I, it, from the fatness of the lion that I saw, But it was right there. I mean, they were feeding right where we were parked. So I don't know where it is or what's happened to, you know, the remainder of it, the head, a couple of small bones. Maybe it was a really, really small calf and they devoured the whole thing. That's not impossible. If it was a newborn, they would have eaten everything. They would have eaten all the bones and everything. Maybe leaving one or two little pieces of vertebrae. That's the joy of being out here, of course. on this proper winter's day and of course to most of you calling what I'm calling winter now winter is uh, ridiculous many of you have got far worse winters than this here we are at the water hole where there is not much water and nor are there any lions seemingly while we look around here Byron seems to have retrieved his signal let's go back across to him and find out what he's going to do this afternoon That's right, James. Thank you. I did get some signal back and we are on Cheetah Plains at the moment. It's a very interesting story and situation that James has got going on there with those lionesses that have disappeared. I'm not too sure what could have happened. We did hear... ...chased off and maybe the hyena took the carcass and ran away. It's interesting that the vultures were sitting there though because it was a very small carcass and usually they prefer something bigger where they are guaranteed some scraps. So I'm not too sure what happened, happened there. I'm sure James will work it out shortly. So Viam and I are really just exploring this afternoon, having a look at this different terrain. As I said, I haven't been down here yet. Is this really live? Yes, you are 100% live from the middle of South Africa or the northeastern part of South Africa rather. Let's just have a look quickly. Here, here's the elephant. Oh, there we go. Looks like a young bull. Can you all see it? I see another one off to the left, just moving through the thicket. Might be a bit tricky for Vian to get. Just moving off there. But yes, Philo, we are completely live. What we are seeing, you are seeing immediately. There's no breaks, there's no cuts, which is... Let's just see if I can get you another view quickly. Look like two younger bulls that are moving around together. Let me see, let me see. Hang on. It is quite thick, eh? Hang on. And these dry leaves, you can actually hear the elephant moving through the bush as they are walking past can't see them but I can hear them very clearly just as they're scraping against the trees those dry leaves make a beautiful sound against their hide that was a nice surprise there you can have a look look how dry those leaves are at the moment we have had a very dry year so far but there is still a bit of food around for these animals and animals like elephant know exactly where to find all the good food and there is still some water so no but what a great little surprise as i was saying you never know what you're going to bump into and we bump straight into an elephant or two elephant rather i see a few more tracks there's possibly a, a herd that moved through earlier occasionally you can get these younger bulls following herds like that um, it's only really the dominant bulls, the big dominant bulls, that will try and mate with females. So while we are heading out further into Cheetah Plains and looking at Torchwood, I would have expected to see one of her tracks, though, by now, if she'd done that. So she might be going... Um, Torchwood, everybody, is a property to the east of us, where we are not allowed to go, but the animals are obviously free to come and go as they please. I'm just going to keep an eye on the road to see if there are any very aggressive little fellows that are the forktail dongos. There it goes. All right. 
Oops. You can see that hole. All right, so let's watch the ground and just see if there aren't any lion tracks coming down this way. There certainly weren't any going down towards the water hole. So they went down to the water, they should have crossed this road at some stage. Otherwise, they may have just gone further into the bush to rest. And they could have been very close by, you know, to where we saw them. Now, Tasha is in this pride this morning, and no male, and you thought there was always a male with them to protect them. Now, one of the misconceptions uh, not helped at all by the magnificent film, great story, terrible biology, that was the Lion King, uh, is that a male lion is part of the pride. He is not part of the pride at all, Tasha. Um, the male lion is a extraneous part of the pride. So the pride is the female, normally related, and their youngsters. The male can uh, do, uh, normally a co So, Tasha, the males are not part of the pride. They protect the pride's territories as a whole from marauding males, and that helps the cubs not to be killed by new males coming into the area. But they're not part of the pride. So, And, in fact, for the females, they'd almost rather not have the males with them because a male lion out here quite apart from being the noble beast portrayed in the lion, but from everybody, from the prides, from the hyenas, from anyone. Now, let's go across back to Byron. He's managed to find some elephants, and they seem to be quite thirsty. Look at this, everyone. A beautiful herd of elephant. Remember, while we were driving, we saw those other two. I said there were definitely tracks of a herd that's come through, and those two bulls might have been following. I think that's exactly what's happened here. They are following this herd, and look at that little... Beautiful calf. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm in my element now. This is one of my favorite animals, and it's so great to be able to see them at a waterhole. And they are really enjoying it. It's been a nice warm day. We've had a few cool days the last two or three. So it's been really warm today. They are enjoying this water and a bit of mud. <laughs> Look at that. Let's see that one. That, yeah, there we go. VM is just focused on that there. That is a female. So you can see... Just hang on, there's a beautiful female getting quite close to us on the right with the baby. Look at that, very close to us. So this female right here in front of us, if you have a look at her head over there, you see it's a very sharp, angular, younger elephant is suckling from. The females have their mammary glands under the front legs. You might just be able to see it over there. Yep. That is also a sign that you could look for. The males obviously do not have that. Wow, this is incredible. Look how she's smelling. There's a, a buffalo skull, an old buffalo skull down there. That female is just smelling it. They, I think elephants are incredibly intelligent. Quite a few of them still drinking. And those just moving off probably had enough water. And what they'll do is they'll just continue moving around and looking for food, feeding while the rest of these finish up. This is such a beautiful scene. Trunk into the mouth as they lift it up and they drink that way. They can take quite a lot of water into their trunks. About 8 to 10 litres. So Robin from Maryland has asked an interesting question. 
about the elephant and what keeps the water from going all the way up through the nasal cavity when it goes up their trunk. So they have got valves and they do control it and there's, the trunk is made up of so many muscles so they can control it very well. They won't suck it all the way up right into the, the nasal cavity um, but what they'll do is they'll suck it up, hold it and then and it and it flows down into their mouth but there are thousands of muscles within that trunk it really is an incredible appendage see these two still drinking intently Incredible sound, very interesting vocalization come from that elephant. And that could have been for a number of reasons. Maybe it was just a little bit agitated with that adult behind it. It is in a tricky spot there at the moment, struggling to get out. It's amazing how elephants can climb there and climb up really steep embankments and go down the most incredible places if they have to. Another beautiful female walking towards us. Enjoying this as much as I am. Perfect for a Saturday afternoon. See, the herds like this of elephant predominantly consist of the females and a lot of the, the, the calves or the youngsters, but mainly, mainly females. There will be young males within this herd, but once they get to a certain age, like those first two that we saw earlier, they generally get pushed out of the herd. The reason for that is the, the females just are a little bit hesitant with having those young bulls. They get a bit boisterous. They, they, they cause a bit of unrest within the herd. So they get pushed out. And then what happens is those males will go and try and meet up with big dominant bulls. And those bulls then teach those younger males how ready to mate. But for now, with, in a herd like this, it's mainly the youngsters with the, the adult females, but there will be some young males there too. So Christine has asked a question about the elephant, and Christine would like to know, do elephants use tools? So Christine, no, not that I have ever seen. Um, they rely a lot on this, the strength of the, and the power and um, the capability of that tusk, oh, sorry, of the trunk. Those are their, their tusks. They rely a lot on that to tear bark, break branches, or dig up mud or sand. They do use their tusks quite a lot. And also their feet. They will kick loose a lot of trees or branches or, uh, or roots that they are looking to feed on. They often kick up sand and mud so that they can throw it on their backs. The reason for that is it protects their skin, cools them down and also keeps a lot of the flies away. In terms of using any other tools around, I've never seen it and I don't think they do. But as I've listed, they've got a number of Really fantastic to see these elephants in the waterhole, the interaction, the sounds. And while they move off, why don't we cross over to James and get an update from him. Maybe he has something regarding those lions. All right, just a quick update from us, everybody. I eventually found one lion track coming north over the road, just into this area here. I'm probably going to go off on foot and just see if we can't find them. They may be down in the shade here in the drainage line. 
But while we do that, um, I think spend a little bit more time with Byron. Elephant really do love water. I've seen in, in different areas uh, where the water is more, pro uh, more prevalent, and especially up uh, Botswana area where there's a lot of flooding and you've got large rivers, elephants will often go right into these rivers and swim. They play around, especially in the summer when it's very hot. They play and, uh, and if they need to cross these deep rivers, they will swim right across them where you just see the trunks sticking out of the water, breathing for them. It's incredible. Never seen or heard of an elephant having a blocked trunk. Those valves would control that all that sand that they pick up and and uh, and suck up. Usually, what they do though is they try and grab it with their trunk. They wrap the sand or the mud around the bottom of their trunk, almost like you would scoop it with your hand, and then they throw it on their on their backs. They don't necessarily suck up the sand or the mud. So it, but there will definitely still be some dust that can get up into the trunk, but they will then eventually blow it out, just like you would blow your nose. They will get rid of it so it doesn't get blocked. And, uh, but it is an incredible appendage, and it's amazing the, 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 the ability to pick up tiny, tiny uh, objects like fruit or, um, or little sticks, and the, it got an infection, maybe from ticks, and often what happens is that infection or those ticks can cause an animal to lose its tail and with other animals you might see a tail get bitten off maybe from lions i don't think this is from lions i have seen up in botswana and zambia where i was mentioning when the elephants cross the the rivers where crocodiles go and they they try their luck and they occasionally grab an elephant tail and bite it off so that is also a cause but that would not happen in this area i don't think there's I mean, where we are now, there are some big rivers to the south and a lot of crocodiles there, but I don't think these elephant spent enough time in, in those rivers for crocodiles to bite the tails off. I think that is possibly from ticks. There hasn't been too much mud splashing around with these elephant. Um, and the reason for that is because it is, it is winter, so it's not too hot. But in summer, when it is very hot, they like to splash water and mud on their backs. It helps keep them cool. And often what they will do then is they'll go find a nice big tree and rub up against it. The reason for that is it scrapes off some of the ticks that might be sitting on them. Just get rid of the, 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 the fleas that, uh, that they, they have, but they've got very thick hides. So they don't have many, not like a lot of the antelope species in that, but the mud does help them. And you'll have these prominent rubbing posts. When they go in there, rub So Brock would like to know if elephants ever leave the national parks and cause damage to neighboring farms or neighboring areas. Uh, Brock, in certain, certain areas, it can occur. I mean, we are very far away from any, um, I suppose, any settlement at the moment. But, but on the outskirts of the Greater Kruger National Park, yes, there are, there are settlements and farms. And if the elephant do get out, they try, and they try their best to, to get them back as quickly as possible, if they can. But they can cause damage in other parts of Africa. Elephant, so Helen has asked, what is an elephant's favorite food? So, Helen, to keep these large animals going, they need to feed on a lot of vegetation. They are not too fussy. They will eat everything from grass to branches to leaves, bark of trees, roots, and fruit. I must admit, though, I think in summer, when these beautiful marula trees that we have in the area, when they give fruit or bear fruit, the elephant absolutely love that fruit. Very rich in vitamin C, but the, the flavor is, is very nice. And we can eat it too. The 
to shake some of the fruit out of the tree. It's incredible to watch. They lift their trunk up and they place the, the bottom of their, their trunk or their mouth up against the tree and they rock it once or twice and that often shakes some of the fruit loose and they will pick them up with their trunks and feed on it. You can find piles of elephant dung full of marula fruit. It's incredible to see. So I would, I would say that's probably their favorite. So Nora has asked, do elephants hold their breath while they are drinking water? Or can they breathe through their mouth? They can definitely breathe through their mouth, Nora. Uh, so they don't have to hold their breath. They will just purely suck up the water. See, this elephant is very clever. Have a look there. So certain water holes in winter um, are pumped full of water. And the reason for that is it does get dry. And because of all the wildlife around, they do have to be managed. And that... But Nora, they will definitely not hold their breath. They will still breathe, but they will use their trunk just to suck up the water. And then as they are lowering it, just like we drink, then you obviously don't breathe, but they will, they will then drink the water. Look at that. Very interesting. Just incredible again. Look how that, how that trunk works. Puts it in his mouth. There we go. A little bit. I could sit here for hours watching these elephant. They, as I mentioned earlier, just one of my favorite animals. I think they're so intelligent and they can be peaceful and graceful and and um, and very caring animals to one another. I've often seen footage and I've seen it myself how they help the youngsters either get food or get out of water holes. You'll be surprised that a young elephant can often get stuck in a muddy wallow like this and the adults will come and just give it a helping trunk and get out of the water. They are amazing animals. It's purely to get to the leaves and the branches that are higher up if they can't reach it. It's an example of that elephant just blowing its trunk and you saw the power of that air and the dust that was blown up from it. See, so it's very easy for them to keep the trunk clear. Have a look, you see how that elephant's resting? Oh, it's bit up a little stick. Oh. Wow, look at this very interesting behavior. See that trunk? It's got almost two little prehensile muscle, that, that trunk. That, and that whole trunk is basically one big muscle made up of many, many muscles. So Jenny from Texas has asked if once the, the grass becomes more scarce further into winter, will the animals move off? And yes, uh, Jenny, they, they do. In certain times of year, when the vegetation decreases because of drought, and why don't you go back to James and get an update from him and those line tracks. Now, I've done an extensive walk through this area, well, relatively extensive anyway, and, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have any more tracks. I don't know where they've gone. There were some vehicle tracks coming in here, so maybe the very last people to view these lions came in here this morning. But I've had a walk through here. I haven't seen anything. We're going to do one last... We're just going to stick our noses in here along this old track. 
because that's obviously what she needs to do. She needs to suckle her babies. So maybe it was just a brief hunting foray away. One or two more vehicle tracks through here. We'll just follow them through and then head out and see what else this marvelous wilderness has to offer us. Yeah. I think we's uh, flogging a dead horse here. So let's marvelous animals, elephants, of course. And especially when it's a little bit dry, they spend so much time drinking water and going down to water and then fighting with each other and playing. Ah, it's just great. This magnificent tree that we're driving underneath, of course, is called a torchwood. Can you reach a leaf there, Davy? Sure. There we go. Now, the torchwood leaf is quite leathery for viewers and guests alike. Um, I don't know, it seems to be inflammable when I try and light it, but it can be used to kill fish. And what the poison does is get into the gills of the fish and drops them dead, and apparently it doesn't taint the meat at all. So if you're ever desperate out here without a fish hook and really in need of something to eat and you're unable to get into the water to catch a catfish, that's your stuff. Torchwood seeds, crushed up, unburnt. I can see the lion track now. Uh, therein is uh, got seven colours on it, male and female lilac breasted roller. They certainly at this time of the year are the, by far the most colourful birds. Uh, at other times of the year they are probably the most colourful birds are probably the sun birds. Well in fact I mean they're around now as well but you just don't see them very much because there are not many flowers for them to eat. Now the tracks come through here. I'm in many minds as to what to do. Well, let's have a listen and see if we can't hear some birds alarm calling. While we do that, Kevin, I'll show you a picture of these colourful birds, the sunbirds. Oh, you know what? The most colourful in summer are the bee eaters, I would say. So if we go across to the sunbirds, there they are. And we get, the most colourful one we get here is called the collared sunbird. There. There. Isn't that beautiful? Stunning. Ooh, hang on. I'm getting an update in my ear about Karula. Oh, there's a kill. Let's go there. <laughs> Keep up with you now. That's exciting news that James has about Karula. Hopefully he has some luck there. Looks like the lions are evading him this afternoon. We're still just exploring Cheetah Plains. I have absolutely no idea where we are, so <laughs> it's very fun. But I don't think we have gone off the beaten track too far so trying to look for some of the planes that they have in this area and that'll be nice I think for some general game which could be very interesting uh, what else I mean polar bears and uh, and wildlife in in the Antarctic that would be wonderful something different uh, there's so much Madagascar uh, South America the Pantanal Jaguars Oh, there's so many different places to go to. A beautiful area here, that a beautiful clearing. Let's see what we have. Nice water hole. Uh, let's see, there's a lot of buffalo dung around. Let me just stop and scan here a little bit. But it's nice to be able to, to be getting into these openings and these clearings. Generally, wildlife do enjoy this a lot. It's a bit, a bit safer for them. And the reason for that is just it's easier to spot any, any potential danger or, or predator that could be coming towards them. But during the day, even the antelope species and that will start moving off into the thickets and feeding, looking for a bit of shade. But in the evenings, I'm sure, later, to, uh, later this afternoon, early evening, I think you'll probably get quite a few animals coming out into these clearings and spend the night out here. 
Uh, this is interesting. Have a look at this tree in front of us. And unfortunately, it is dead. Now, this is an acacia tree, a knob thorn. But what has happened here, and if you look a little bit lower, look how pale that, uh, that bark is. And the reason for that is elephant have ring barked this tree, which means they have stripped the bark right around the tree. What that causes is the tree, all the nutrients, and there's nothing to transfer those nutrients up and down the tree anymore. So that causes the tree to die. And how they do it, and we spoke about it earlier, is they use those tusks. And they're able to push a tusk into the side of the bark, and they pull it and they rip it open, and then they'll use their trunks and they'll strip it. And there's a tree like this, and you can actually see it up just to the, to the top of the tree. You can see you have these strips of bark, and it's very easy for the elephant to, to strip the bark. There we go, see it hanging over there? And they pull these long strips of bark up the tree, and that's what causes it to move all the way over. Do those trees continue to grow or do they die? So, Don, what happens often is if the trees are pushed over, but the root system is still intact and the tree hasn't broken completely, the tree is still able to grow. If the tree is pushed over and the root system is uprooted and broken, then that tree would not be able to grow anymore and inevitably dies. But either way, what happens is you do get a micro uh, habitat forming. So you get a lot of other animals, scrub hares, little dakers, uh, stenbok, often go and use those, those pushed over trees as shelters or as homes. And you get a lot of in the habitat for some of these smaller animals. See a few zebra tracks around here, and we are approaching another clearing. Oh, there's some beautiful clearings up, up ahead. Let's see, I'm sure we'll get some activity.